Matthew chapter number 26. We'll begin reading verse 31. Jesus has just finished what is termed the Last Supper. He has just instituted what we know as the Lord's Supper. It's one of the ordinances to the local church. During this supper, he reveals to his disciples that one of them is going to betray him. You know the story. They begin to all ask, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Except John. John's over there leaning on his bosom, loving on the Lord. Finally, Peter says, hey, John, ask him who it is. Huh? And what a blessing that you can get so close to the Lord that others envy you. Hmm? Uh, of course, we know he was talking about Judas. And when Judas exited that night, the Lord had told him, That which he doest, doest thou quickly. But the Lord already knew all the events that was going to happen and befall that night. And can I say, Sister Marcy, that night he already knew that you needed a Savior. And he knew there would come a day when you'd be at a Bible study and realize you needed to be saved. He knew all that. And yet he still endured the shame of the cross for the joy that was set before him. What was the joy? Look around. You and I, we're his rejoicing. And so, uh, but I'm interested in verse 31 tonight. It says, Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Let's pray. Father, we sure do thank you and bless you for what we've already heard and felt tonight in the house of God. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that there are those that come ready to pour out praise on thee, ready to come and worship thee, ready to unreservedly give their best back to thee because you gave your best for us. And Lord, we're certainly thankful that God, one day you sent a missionary by, and this fella got to hear the gospel. Brother Almeida not only got to hear it, the Lord, he heard it again and again and again. And in your long suffering, you just kept using that missionary uh, to speak to his heart. And God, we're thankful for the, the Lord, you saved him. And God, you came seeking to save that which was lost. Uh, now, God, you've called him and you're sending him back to his people. And God, I pray many would come to trust in Christ. Uh, and God, I pray you not only bless him, but every true missionary out there doing the work of God. Uh, and God, help us to realize that, Lord, when we exit this place, uh, we're entering the mission field, uh, whether it be at school or on the work or in our neighborhood. And God, help us to be uh, effective missionaries and help us to shine as lights in this dark world. Uh, now, Lord, thank you for the scriptures. And God, I pray you'd bless the reading of it. I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel tonight. Lord, you know the need of every heart. Lord, uh, I, I dare say nobody walked an hour and a half to get here tonight, uh, but people have made their way to the house of God tonight. Just may be that God, one, he is here tonight unsaved, lost without God. God, you've been speaking to their heart. God, I pray tonight would be the night they realize, uh, Lord, uh, if they die without you, they'd wake up in hell. And God, I pray tonight would be the night they realize they don't have to go to hell. Uh, their sins can be forgiven by the almighty God of glory. Uh, God, I pray tonight they'd get saved by the good grace of God. Uh, God, I pray for your people, Lord, that tonight uh, it would light in on them that, God, uh, uh, you're a great God. And, uh, Lord, you're worthy to be praised every day of our lives. And, God, I pray uh, we'd leave out revived and ready to be servants for the Master's use. Uh, 
Now, Father, use uh, again this unworthy vessel. Have your will and way. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice a few things. First of all, verse 31, I want you to notice the prophecy. The prophecy. The Bible says, Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and scatter the uh, uh, and, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered uh, abroad. Uh, notice this is a prophecy of Zechariah found in Zechariah chapter number 13 verse number 7. Uh, now notice uh, uh, how prophetic it is because Jesus says it is written. Uh, can I say Jesus came to fulfill the scriptures? Uh, can I say the very gospel says in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 uh, that he uh, died according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again according to the strip, scriptures. Uh, can I say in Jesus' 33 years uh, 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 on this earth, uh, he never walked outside the pages of the scriptures. Uh, he did everything according to the will of God uh, and according to the written word of God. Uh, can I say he was the living word, uh, but he uh, fulfilled the written word. Uh, can I say you and I have the scriptures tonight, uh, and Jesus wants us to, uh, if we're really going to be Christ-like, uh, uh, to walk uh, according to the will of God uh, and walk according to the word of God. Uh, thanks be unto God we have the word of God. Uh, but we see the prophecy. He tells them he's going to fulfill the scriptures, uh, and he tells them all of them would be offended in him that night. Uh, can I say... Uh, 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 there's a lot of things God tells us through the Word of God uh, and through preaching, and we don't believe it. We don't agree with it. Amen. That's just your opinion. We're going to find out the disciples had the same mentality that we do a lot of times. Huh? Notice, if you will, the promise in verse number 32. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Can I say that when Mary Magdalene went down to the disciples when they were hiding in that uh, 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 room, that upper room, uh, and she went down and told them that uh, they went down to have a burial service, but uh, uh, two angels appeared unto them and said, He is not risen, or He is not here, He's risen as He said. Uh, they didn't believe it. Uh, Peter and John ran down there to see if it were true. Uh, but can I say, He told them that night uh, He would rise again. Uh, how many times do we hear the Word of God preached uh, and our faith yet dwindles and we don't believe what God said? Uh, some of you sitting here tonight have heard preaching all your life, and yet you're still no farther along than you were 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, because you just don't believe what God says. It'll be a great day in your life when you just believe God. Hmm? Uh, I say hallelujah. Just trust Him. Uh, he knows what he's doing. He's God. Hmm? We see the prophecy. We see the promise. Notice the prideful. In verse number 33. Peter answered and said unto him, Of course it was Peter. He's the loud mouth. Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. You get in trouble when you start promoting I. Uh, he says, if everybody on the face of the earth is offended in you, I won't be. Hmm? Uh, can I say you better watch what you say? The devil just might make you eat your words. In another account, we find where Jesus tells Peter that the devil have to desire to sift him as wheat. Uh, can I say the devil desires you too? It's only by the grace of God, God hasn't got you in a sifter tonight. Hmm? Uh, uh, but oh, what pride. I'll never be offended in thee. Uh, it's a dangerous thing to pop off. Uh, the Apostle Paul gave us the great illustration. Uh, he said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Hmm? Uh, can I say, if it wasn't for God's grace, we'd all be in a mess tonight. Uh, can I say this? We're all guilty of having a little bit of pride every now and then. 
We're all guilty of putting ourselves before the will of God. We're all uh, guilty of getting ahead of God at times. Uh, we see the prophecy. We see the promise. We see the prideful. Now, no, notice the pronouncement, verse 34. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Hmm? The Lord lets him know, you're not only going to be offended me, you're going to deny me three times before, before the morning. Hmm? Hmm? What a pronouncement. I don't know about you, but if I'm reading the Word of God and God puts His finger on my life and says, Today's the day, you're a big boy, you're going to find out how you are. Boy, that would scare me to death. Hmm? Didn't even phase Peter. Huh? Let's look at verse 35. Peter's arguing with the Lord. Can you imagine that? Uh, is anybody in here bold enough to stand up tonight and say, oh, I'll argue with the Lord? But we do every service or every week, or every so often. We'll be sitting in church, and God's speaking to our hearts, and we're like, oh, no, mm -mm. Ah, I'm not going to, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not giving that. I'm not being that. No, 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 no. We're just as guilty as Peter. Right. Hmm? But look at Peter here. Uh, I want you to see something in verse 35. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, Yet will I not deny thee. Aren't you glad God don't hold us to our foolishness? God could have let him get killed that night. Mm. Uh, but no, see, God looked beyond Peter's words and even Peter's heart condition that night because he already knew what Peter was going to do on the day of Pentecost. Mm. But he knew Peter had to be humbled a little bit before he could be that guy. But I want you to notice the pursuers there in verse 35. It says, likewise, all said, uh, likewise also said all the disciples. When Peter popped off and pat patted his chest and bounced his chest, all of a sudden it encouraged them, and they got the courage to say the same thing. Oh, no, we're, we're not going to be offended in you, and uh, if the whole world uh, uh, is offended, we're not going to be offended, and we'll die before we deny you. Hmm? Can I say... It's a dangerous thing. Just do something out of the will of God because you don't know who's watching you. Amen. And can I say there are people that the actual devil will plant to champion other people away from the will of God. Hmm? Peter does something in the flesh and all of a sudden the guys that should have been closest to God and they were closer to God than anybody that's ever walked on the face of the earth and they're following Peter, not the Lord. How many preachers have led people astray? How many teachers have led people astray? How many officers and trustees have led? How many people sitting in a congregation have led people astray? I've seen that where somebody in the congregation will pop off about something, get upset about something before long. Half the congregation's going with them, going down to start another church. Hmm? Uh, but I'm not going to preach on any of that stuff. I'm interested in verse 32. He says, But after I'm risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. I'm interested in where he says, I will go before you. Can I say as I stand here tonight that I've never been anywhere that he hasn't already been? I've never experienced anything that he hasn't already experienced. I've never faced anything that he hasn't already faced. And so I want to preach with the Lord's help on this thought. I want to preach on he's already been there. He's already been there. Can I say Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 4.15, For we have not a high priest uh, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, uh, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Uh, can I say, neighbor, he's already been there. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, uh, 
no matter what valley, no matter what obstacle, no matter what mountain in front of you, uh, no matter uh, how big, how evil, how uh, uh, um, immeasurable it may seem to be to you, uh, uh, listen, uh, we have a great high priest, we have a mediator, an intercessor uh, who's entered within the veil, uh, our Savior, our Master, our Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, He's already been there, uh, He's already faced it, uh, He has the answers, uh, he has the solution. Uh, uh, friend, it may have caught you by surprise, uh, but it hasn't caught him by surprise. Uh, it may be deep water you've never trod before, uh, but he's already been there. Uh, you can take refuge in the fact uh, uh, we have an almighty God uh, who is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Uh, he's already been there, friend. Don't fret about it. Uh, he's already been there. Can I say this tonight? He's been through gainsaying. That word gainsaying is a biblical word. It means uh, he's faced opposition. It means that he's been denied. Can I say if you live long enough and you have a testimony for Jesus Christ, you're going to face opposition. The Bible says, Yea, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Uh, not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to invite you to their events. Uh, not everybody's going to care for you. Matter of fact, uh, some people are going to flat out not like you. Uh, and there'll be others that you've never even spoken to, but they're going to hate you uh, and hate what you stand for. Uh, and there's going to be some you get a burden for. Uh, and you share the gospel with them. Uh, and you try and tell them the truth. Uh, and you try and point them to Jesus. Uh, but they'll deny him and they'll deny you. Uh, 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 friend, uh, uh, you're not the first one going through that. Uh, he's been there. Uh, he's faced it. Uh, he knows what it is to be denied. Uh, he knows what it is to face opposition and hatred. Uh, he's faced it all. Uh, and friend, when you feel like uh, nobody cares uh, and you feel like nobody else is going through it, uh, just lean upon his bosom. Uh, just roll it over on him. Uh, just spend time with him. Uh, he's been there, friend, and he knows how to comfort you. Uh, those that came out for visitation on Monday night already know this. Monday is makes three weeks in a row I got one of those thank you tracks cut up and sent back to us. Inside the track, just like the other times before, are false tracks denying the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, friend, I don't know who keeps sending those back, but can I say, it is no accident that I've gotten the same track sent back, cut up the same way. I'm not talking about ripped up. It is meticulously cut up, uh, and it's uh, sent back with false tracks. Uh, uh, somebody has got uh, a, a hold of those. Somebody is trying to make a point. Uh, somebody is trying to get us to see uh, their ways the right way, and our ways not the right way. Uh, uh, we're facing some opposition. Uh, we're facing some denial of the Lord Jesus. Uh, but can I say this? Uh, uh, come hell or high water, it don't matter what man believes or man says. Uh, Jesus is Lord. He is not becoming Lord. He is Lord. He was Lord before he spoke this world in existence. He'll be Lord when this world is set on fire. He is the King of glory. And mark her down. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Can I say even the sorry no good devil himself is going to bow down and proclaim him Lord. Hey! What a God we serve. Uh, can I say, you may be denied. You may be opposed. They may talk about you in the shadows and the corners at work. Uh, but friend, uh, he's already been there. Just talk to him about it. He knows how to soothe our feelings because he was touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Can I say he's already been through gainsaying? Can I say tonight he's been in grievances? Mm, that word simply means he's been mistreated. He's been exploited. He's been abused. He's been done wrong. 
He's been talked about without a cause. He's been mocked. He's been shamed. He's been treated as the off-scour of the world. Can you imagine the one who spoke the world in existence? Uh, the Creator came amongst the creature, uh, and the creature uh, denied the Creator uh, and mocked him and abused him. Uh, and hey, uh, thought he had the upper hand, uh, but hey, neighbor, at the great white throne judgment, uh, they'll get their final just do. The Bible says in Daniel chapter number 3, and you know the story, I'm talking about he's been in grievances. And there'll be times, Miss Cinda, when somebody's going to pose you and do you wrong because you love Jesus. Hmm? Uh, can I say, young men, there's going to be a time when somebody at school or somebody in the neighborhood mistreat you because you go to church talk about you because you go to church maybe some young lady you think's real pretty and you would like a, 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 to get to know her a little better she don't want to have anything to do with you because you go to church can I say uh, Caleb uh, you're going to have classmates at school you're going to invite to church because you want to see them get saved and they're going to make fun of you hmm Can I say, Brother Brian, they may even do you wrong. You may have indictments against you and charges against you that has no merit to them. But they don't care about the law. They care about their way. They don't care about the God you serve. They care about the God they serve themselves. He's been there. He's been there. And he's been there for his people. I know you'd love to see your family saved more than anything. And it pains you. And we're praying that God saves them. We know He wants to. But I've seen families turn against their own family and mistreat them in heinous ways. And can I say God has seen His people for 2,000 years, some sown asunder, some put to death, some held hostage and watched their family put to death because they would not deny him. Friend, he's been there. He's been there in the heat of the moment. He's been there to help those facing the most heinous and wicked opposition. You say, preacher, has he really been there? In Daniel chapter number 3 and verse 24, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonied and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Uh, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, uh, and they have no hurt, uh, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Uh, friend, he was there with them uh, in the fire. Uh, can I say, uh, three went in, three came out. Where's uh, that fourth man? He's still in the fire. Uh, and friend, when you face it, he's been there. He's there. Uh, he'll give you strength in the midst of your opposition. Uh, he's been there through gainsaying. He's been there in grievances. Can I say this? He's been through grueling. He's been through pain and misery, heartbreak, heartache. We do not understand the love of God. The closest we can come to even fathoming the, the, the love of God is to see the love of a mother for its child. Hmm? Now listen, little Ella back there, she knows who Big Rev is. She lights up when she sees him. She knows who Mimi Awesome is. She lights up when she sees her. But she doesn't look at Big Rev and Mimi Awesome like she looks at Mama. She looks at her different. Huh? Why is that? Because she is reciprocating the love that that Mama is showing her. Hmm? Can I say? That's the closest we know to the love of God, an unconditional love. I've seen mothers watch their children sentenced and sent off to jail, but that mother still loves that child so much that she'll do anything to help that child. I've seen mothers, uh, when everybody else will turn their back on somebody, that mama won't. 
I'm talking about true mothers. I'm not talking about some of these that just throw away their baby and don't care about them. But can I say tonight, we can't fathom the love of God. We can't fathom why a holy, righteous, sovereign, providential, all-knowing God who created everything would love sinners who have sinned against Him, sinned by birth, naturally, sinned by choice, sinned by practice, why God would look beyond our sin and look beyond our, our faults and failures and love us, we have no idea. But can I say, while he was being driven with nails on the cross, he's looking at those men who nailed him there in love. We don't understand that. When he tells us to forgive because God for Christ's sake has forgiven us. He can say that because he's been there because he cried, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When he tells us to walk circumspectly, when he tells us to yield and tells us that all things are lawful for us but not all things are expedient, and when he tells us something, it's because he's been there. And friend, when he tells us there's a peace that passes to understanding, he can say that because he's the prince of peace. And when you're miserable, when you're heartbroken, when you have been facing something you thought you could never, ever handle, he's been there. And he'll help you in ways that you didn't know. It's amazing the strength some people get from him. Hmm? I watch people in this world fall apart at the l most insignificant thing, but I've watched children of God face some of the most horrific things and come out with their head held high, praising the Lord. Where did they find the strength? Him. Because he's already been there. Hmm? Can I say this? He's been in the grave. Huh? He's been in the grave. You know, in Matthew 27, verse 59, And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, uh, which he had hewn out of the rock, uh, and he rolled a great st stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. He's been in the grave. Uh, we know um, the psalmist lets us know that death is the king of terrors. Mm, there's something building this flesh that we don't like to think about death we don't like to talk about death we don't like visiting funeral homes because it reminds us of our own fate if the Lord Jesus don't come back after his church we're all going to the grave hmm? this dust is going back to the dust of the earth it's reality hmm? even Houdini said he would escape death he didn't, he never come back Hmm? So what happened to Houdini? He went to hell. That's what happened to him. Uh, well, I'm trying to help you tonight. Nobody wakes up and say, Boy, I hope today's the day I get hit by a bus. But can I say I'd rather get hit by a bus than die a slow, painful death. But nobody says today's the day. I hope I die. We don't say that, not if we're in our right mind. We kind of think, boy, I don't even want to think about death. You're getting old. You thinking about death? Sometimes. That's why you got to get rid of a cat and get a dog. You won't think about death. Huh? No, we don't. We, I mean, we know it's there. And can I say, I'm a whole lot closer to it now than I was 20 years ago. I'm closer to it now than I was yesterday. But we don't, we don't like to think about it. You know, you're older than me, but you might outlive us all. I don't know. But we don't like to think, Janet, you've had one foot in the grave for a long time. Huh? Well, you're still here. But it's one of those things we aren't looking forward to. Even though we got all the promises to be absent from the bodies and be present with the Lord. 
We know that the moment that we take our last breath, we wake up in glory. Uh, now, we don't know what glory is, uh, but John gave us a few glimpses, and it sounds pretty good. Streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. That's New Jerusalem. Uh, 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 we don't know what the abode of God is like right now, but I, I guarantee you one thing. Uh, it must be wonderful. Uh, uh, the Lord Jesus is there. The Father's there. What a blessing it'll be uh, uh, to be with the Lord forevermore uh, and never to be tempted by by sin and all the struggles of this life but yet our fleshly nature clings to life I've seen where people got to the point that they just put them on morphine or other drugs and they withhold food from them they just have them on uh, uh, water and, and yet they should pass away at any time but they'll hang on for days because this flesh fights death. But friend, I got some good news. You don't have to worry about it. He's already been there. And he's removed the sting of death. And death shall not have victory over us. Uh, he's removed the sting of death. Can I say something? Christians die different than lost people. Uh, Sinners that are wicked, they die and go to hell. Uh, but sinners, we're in the presence of God. But he's taken away the sting. Uh, 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 there are countless events and countless stories, uh, and every preacher has them, uh, where somebody's about to cross over, uh, and they're not in misery, they're not in pain. Uh, there's a look about them because they know uh, uh, the Lord is standing ready to receive them into glory. Uh, He's already been there. He not only removed the sting of death, but he gave us victory over the grave. And Brother Donald, even if these old bodies go back to the dust of the earth one day, uh, he's going to put it back together, resurrect it, and put his uh, 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 touch on us and change us from, incorrupt, uh, from corruptible to incorruptible. Uh, and we'll be given a body fashioned like the Son of God, uh, and we'll be with him forevermore. What a blessing. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you, don't worry about death. He's already been there. He's already been to the grave. And he removed everything that you fear away from it. Mm. Can I say this? He's already been there. He's already been everywhere. Can I say? He's already in glory. Mm. Seated at the Father's right hand. But when Stephen crossed over, just before that, the Lord opened up the heavens and let him see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. Why is he standing to receive Stephen? Ah, uh, he's in glory. What a blessing to go to glory. Uh, I know we call it heaven, we call it home, but it's glory. It's the abode of God. Uh, 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 where seraphim are crying, holy, holy, holy. Uh, 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 where all those that are there uh, uh, constantly are, are telling him how worthy he is in their praise. Can you imagine worshiping God in a glorified body? I wish some of us learned to worship him in an earthly body, but man, when we get over there, we're all going to worship him. Because uh, he's already there. Now, he's in me through the Holy Spirit. And I'm in him. I'm engraved in the palm of his hand. And I'm in him. And he's already there. And can I say the Bible says we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, can I say our citizenship's already there? Our conversation's recorded there. Can I say that in God's eyes, uh, uh, the only thing keeping us from being there is his flesh? Uh, Sidney Weaver says it like this. Practical, one of these days, is going to catch up with our position. And Amen. can I say, he's already there. And so are we in him. Amen. And if we could just learn that he's already went before us. Brother Peter, no matter what you may face in this life, he's already been there. And he's filtered out anything you can't handle. He's filtered out anything that opposes what he's put in you. So you just got to trust him. He's already been there. Miss Tina, he's already been there. Things that you may fear. I know in the future you fear, Bella, what's going to happen? All this. But he's already there. You don't have to worry about it. Huh? And if he loves anybody in this building, he loves Bella. I promise you that. Huh? 
He's not going to let anything happen to Bella. That's, that's, that's one of his choice ones right there. But can I say, he's already been there. And if you face it, Miss Pam, as painful as it may be and as big as it may be and as, as little as you may seem you are, you don't have to fret it. He's already been there and he's filtered out what you can't handle. What a God. He's already been there. Hmm? Hey, he's promised not to put more on us than we're able to bear. He's already been there. He's already been there, Brother Brian. Sorry. Now, that don't mean that we're not going to go through heartaches. Don't mean we're not going to go through trials and, and pressures and problems. But he's already been there. Huh? And he's taken out what we can't handle. Hmm? He won't allow the devil to sift us unless we're able to be sifted. Because he's already there. Hmm? Owen, he's already there. Hmm? All them questions you got about all them things, it runs around in your mind because nobody's mind runs like your mind. And it runs, man. Huh? Some of the stuff you come up with, son, huh? quit reading. Get out, ride a bike, all right? Huh? You know what I'm saying? Huh? But listen, all that stuff you're wondering about and all that, he's already been there. And one day, he's going to reveal it to you. Because hmm? when we get to glory, you'll know as you, you were known. He, you're going to know everything. You're going to know the half I wasn't told. Hmm? You'll not have any questions in heaven. It's worth going to heaven just so you won't have any questions. Huh? Huh? Tonight, I don't know, I just feel like some of you may be going through some stuff. And you think, deep down inside, because I know how the devil works, he's just throwing stuff at you like, well, if the Lord really loved you, you wouldn't be facing that. Huh? Friend, he's already been there. And can I say, if you read the devotion from this morning, sometimes... You're going through there to better you. But sometimes you're going through there so somebody else can see the Lord in you. But don't fret over it. But Thad, he's already been there. Don't fret over it. Huh? Uh, Brother Naren, when you get to missing mama, you know, you read on, you find out where he takes care of his mother. He's already been there. He knows those feelings. Huh? He's been there. So tonight, just trust him. Just seek him. When it gets too big for you, just fall in his lap. Yes. One of them 2 a.m. prayer meetings with you and him might be in order. My friend, he, he's got the answers. But sometimes he don't even reveal them to us. He didn't to Job. But we have something Job did have. We have a spirit living in us. We have his promises to look at. And Job even said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. When I come forth, I'll come forth as gold. Can I say the Lord's already been there? And he's just trying to shine you up so others can see the Lord in you. So tonight, whatever you're facing, just realize the Lord's already been there. And that just as he told them, he would go before them into Galilee Friend, there's, there's coming a day we're going to run right into him. And whatever we're facing tonight that might trouble us won't even matter. For the sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Tonight, he's already been there. So why don't you give it to him? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Some are already coming. Friend, he knows what you're going through he'll help you if you seek his face and ask for help tonight will you be helped of the Lord some are coming they're picking out a song let's have a word of prayer Father we bless you we're sure glad Lord you're a great God you're an intercessor a mediator a friend that sticketh closer than a brother and Lord you've already been there no matter what we face no matter what is said about us no matter what befalls us Lord you've been there and Lord you've got the answers and you can help us now Lord there are some already in the altar tonight help them others praying in their pews help them others that may still come help them Lord show them exactly what they need tonight and God we do pray if there's somebody here tonight unsaved they'll come we'll get somebody to take a Bible show them how to be saved they can be saved tonight and realize what eternal life is really all about now, God, help folks tonight. 
We'll bless you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.